Planet Hoxies, specifically Hoxies 4 of the Creus system, is an extraordinarily valuable and extraordinarily dangerous planet all the same. Deep within the planet's radioactive crust lies many valuables, such as the mysterious mineral Morkite, but there also rest many billions of hostile creatures simply referred to as Glyphids. These easily disturbed creatures will stop at nothing to kill and devour any invader that steps foot on Hoxies. We have no idea what they eat, but don't worry about it. It is said that a war once raged on Hoxies for an unknown length of time between corporations and the native Hoxies creatures in an effort to secure the valuables within. This war was a lost cause, and the planet was abandoned by all but one dwarven corporation, Deep Rock Galactic. A wealthy and unionized mining company hell bent on braving the dangers of Hoxies with its army of mentally unhinged employees and naive greenbeards. DRG invests an uncountable amount of funds and resources into research and development to thoroughly harvest and expand their operations on Hoxies. All of this in the name of profits and secret dealings within the, the upper management of the company. We took it upon ourselves to begin investigating DRG, Hoxes itself, and all opposition towards DRG and their operations. We have been gathering data and many eyewitness accounts from one of the 87 space rigs orbiting the planet. Space Rig 17 has a crew of four people. The Cowardly Scout, who is basically the bug bait of the team. The Gunner, who is grumpy, unrelenting force. The Driller, aka Mr. Never Follows the Beaten Path. And Engineer, the God of Turrets. These four have faced down everything from rival robot incursions to plague-written bugs in dire need of disinfection, to literal magic rocks that spawn bugs in open rifts. The only thing saving them being hope and a dream. Well, and the Union. They strive to get better equipment and new beer licenses in order to get the most valuable of resources deep down into Hoxus. Now remember, if you listen closely, you can hear for crawl scream deep in the caves as the mission begins to get resources that they are never told what is used for. Some of them do have magical properties and the only thing stopping them is running out of booze, beer, and bacon. Now, while we are on the subject of the crew, we have some personal accounts from each of these four team members aboard the Space Rig 17. To start with, we're going to go over what our friend, the overly serious gunner, had to say about his job. We came across him playing the barrel kick, and he had this to say when we asked him about his job. He also did not want to look at us for some reason. Oh yes, my job as a gunner. Say, do you know about this? Your gun? No, I don't know everything about it, other than the fact it's a Gatling. Alright then, let me tell you about the lead storm. The minigun fires so fast, you have to worry about overheating, long before worrying about running out of the bullets. It became such a problem in the early models, that temperature gauge was built into the weapon. This gun can be upgraded in many different ways. Different modifications, including mostly breaking through armor, <laughs> and slowing down the overheating of course. This beauty fires large caliber rounds, over 3,500 a minute. Can cut a glyph into pieces in seconds. Wow, that's an amazing weapon you have there. Uh, what's it like using it on the job? Uh, the polluted uranium, <laughs> that material used when making these bullets, is damn fine material if you ask me. Did you know this baby can be equipped with incendiary rounds? <laughs> I wow. think it didn't. Wow, sir, that's really cool, but tell us, what is it like to- I haven't even talked about the overclocks for this fight machine. Have you ever wanted to have bullets that come out of the chamber at 90 degree angles and ricochet off the walls? Well, you can do that in a bit of a hole. Also, have you ever wanted your gun to overheat so fiercely it becomes a flamethrower? <laughs> you can do that with overclocking too. Sir! I'm very lucky that I'm such a fine new piece of equipment in my disposal for killing all those bastard bugs and bots down in the hellhole of this planet. I can do whatever I want with it. More damage, more ammo, 
more armor pack <laughs> and more fire. If your hands are not burning by the time you're done shooting this gun, <laughs> you're not shooting enough bullets. Okay, cut the footage, cut it. We're gonna be here for a while. The gunner proceeded to flip a table when we turned down his offer to talk about the coil gun. He then proceeded to drink a blackout stout and went on a furious rampage and had to be restrained by three of his teammates before being dragged off to the medical bay. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next one, Driller. When things settled down, we asked the Driller about his job and he had this to say. Digging? Lots of beautiful digging with just me and my two drills. Just the other day, I made a nice little bunker corner with the little bugs in. The fucking engineer crawled in my hole thinking I was going somewhere cool before he got a baseball cryo. He was an ice cube before he knew it. More of the story, I'm a driller and you better ask me where I'm going before you follow me. You better be prepared to get set on fire, frozen, or just shot with a slug. I'm a natural disaster all by myself and I enjoy every second, every drop. Wow, that was inspiring. Yeah, you want to see the effective of a cryo gun is? Oh no, we're we're good. Believe me. Get down! We had to cut the footage short because the driller began chasing our journalists around with the cryo gun, trying to turn them into ice cubes. Yeah, despite the difficulties and the few loss of staff, we've decided to continue on until we've interviewed each and every team member on this rig. This time, we're moving on to the engineer. Upon entering his room, he was less than thrilled to have an interview with us, though. He seemed to have hijacked one of his lures to play a holographic image of a dwarf dancing. We felt like we needed to give him some space, and about five minutes later, he came out of his room and uh, agreed to do the interview. So you want to know more about me and my job, eh? Well... I have platforms that give you a better upward mobility than certain shitty zipline death traps. All of my primary weapons aren't over 500 pounds, so I'm actually able to move around the battlefield instead of lugging dead weight all over the damn place that eats up our ammo. I can actually defend myself without ending up like the scout at the end of every bloody mission. Most weapons I have specialize in slowing down or distracting the enemy. Stuff like proximity mines to stop them in place, and sentries to pick off the, all the little ones. Isn't that right, Darla? Darla? Who's that? Space rig staff? No, no. <laughs> My beloved sentry right over there. Oh. Um. Okay. Please, go on. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> you see, that what people don't understand is that... They say things like, oh, they only have shitty primaries. But where's all my strength come is in my secondary. You don't look at the gunner and say, he's shit because he only has pistols for secondaries. I have some of the strongest secondaries in the company. Grenade launcher and sh shard diffractor, which is a concentrated beam of light, mind you. And my modified mining laser, now, especially that mining laser, it can pierce through literally anything. Now, you may not kill immediately, but it'll pierce through. Very fascinating line of work you have. <laughs> yes, truly it is now. Would you be interested in a hologram? Oh, really? Is that allowed here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just 500 credits and it's yours. Take a look. Oh, sweet Jesus, cut the camera. Cut it now. Yeah, that was quite something. We had to cut due to some very erotic presentations by the engineer, who had to be pulled away by the gunner for, and I quote, a little chat about the shit-talking. So, after that little mishap, we went to the memorial hall to visit the last person on our checklist, the scout. Now, after entering the memorial hall, we bear witness to a ritual that we were rather unfamiliar with. The scout seemed to be staring at his own statue, just looking longingly at the cod piece of it. Upon seeing us, he immediately opened fire. We had to cut the camera and take cover outside the memorial hall. 
You saw nothing! Now after being locked up below the drill, we were finally able to properly interview the scout. Okay, so like, I'm the most underappreciated dwarf in the group. I'm the most mobile dwarf on the team. I'm able to get any resources in no time. I've never needed platforms or zip lines to get anywhere. On top of that, it's not my fault that I'm the highest damage dealer. You can tell that a fucking RMD hates my guts. Gee, I wonder why. Shut up! I didn't get a minigun. I didn't get a fancy shard deflector. I only have an assault rifle for my primaries. For my secondaries, the only thing they fucking gave me was a crossbow. I'm trying to kill 30 foot tall spiders with a crossbow. My throwables are even worse. I have a field that can slow down enemies, another grenade that freezes and slows them down, one that dis distracts them, and the horrific love child of the cattle prod and the boomerang. I mean, I don't even need anything other than my grappling hook for transportation. But why did they give me a flare gun? <laughs> we go on missions with flares that slow roll your charge all the time. All four of us. So any of that says I'm a shit class, blame my boss. Please. After that interview, the scout started bawling into tears and we left him to his own devices, cutting the camera. Now, with the interviews out of the way, we're going to go over the things that dwarves spend their money on. And minerals. And it isn't just weapons and gears, there is a shop where they go and they can purchase different cosmetics, such as hats, garbs, and even hair and beard dye. These dwarves are known to have such an obsession with fashion that they even have gear for each seasonal event, be it Yuletide, a beach party, an easter egg hunt, whatever. They even have armor based off the Roxpox incident, which ended up taking out one of the space rigs and spreading the infection all across the planet. Yeah, and it is known that this rig is not the only one obsessed with fashion, as when some dwarves die and leave behind their lost gear, there will not only be protected bounty of resources, but also there will usually be paint schemes or other cosmetics. There is even the chance that there might be ideas on victory poses they should do after completing missions. Now we're going to go over mission control and management. These two are a very hot topic for debate as no one really knows anything about them except for themselves. The main thing that we know about Mission Control is he seems to have a decent amount of combat experience, as he seems to be fond of the M1000 Classic Semi-Auto Rifle. He is most likely out of practice, sadly. He is amused by newer weaponry such as the Experimental Plasma Charger. And he seems to be a person that tries to keep the team in line with their mission objectives, although they are generally dismissive of him and his cozy job. The dwarves have stated before that he wouldn't know a monkey wrench from a glyphid's ass. Yes, and as for management, we know they want a myriad of different resources from Hoxie's 4, although we do not know what intentions they have, as it has not been explained to us the purpose of Morkai, Accords, or Alien Eggs. We do know, though, that they are willing to pay large amounts of money to get said resources as soon as possible. They offer bonuses for side objectives as well, and so they try to get the most out of each employment. They even go as far as selling the dwarves new beer licenses in exchange for different foliage they find in the caves. We thank you for joining us on this informational deep dive into the inner workings of DRG. As you can see, it takes extremely disturbed individuals to want to risk their lives fighting bugs for money while living off of beer and bacon on a space rig. One can only imagine what would happen if any of them were fired and allowed to go back to normal society. If they can rip through giant bugs and robots designed to kill them, what would they do to normal people that they come across? We'll leave you with that, folks. Join us next time as we cover the natives of Hoxies next.